a small town in Nevada called Yarrington, where, like the rest of the state, there weren't very many laws restricting our freedom. Gambling, of course, legal, prostitution. At the edge of town, there was a sign that said, end speed zone, thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> that is until our esteemed city council decided to put restrictions on, of all things, dogs. They enacted a leash law. From that point forward, dogs could no longer run free if they were caught by the dog catcher. Off to the dog pound they went. They were claimed into the gas chamber. It was horrible. Dogs no longer had freedom. It was under this dark cloud when Prince came into my neighborhood. Prince was a mangy, shaggy, hungry, Halloween, afraid dog. We've all seen these before. They're just waiting for the next person to hit them, right? So I took pity on Prince. I took, I fed Prince. It was getting to be cold. It was in the fall. I let Prince stay in our garage that night. The next day, I fed Prince again. After a few days, of course, I was Prince's buddy, hung around. So I asked my parents if I could keep Prince. They, they told me if nobody claims him in a week, he's yours. Um, so, Prince was mine. I nursed him back to health. Beautiful dog, gorgeous coat, and he could run like the wind. So I didn't worry too much about those leash laws. I figured he could outrun that fat, mean dog catcher. <laughs> but one night, I left the garage door open, and in the morning, Prince was gone. I thought he would come back that next day after school. He didn't. And so I figured the dog catcher must have got him. So off to the dog pound they went. It was a little structure on the outside of town. Not what you might think of as a real dog pound. This is Yarrington, a small town. It was just dog cages. And there were five or six dogs in there. I felt bad about that, but Prince wasn't there. Next day I went again. A couple more dogs, still no Prince. By Friday, the dog pound was getting full. Prince was not there, but my mission became bigger. I knew I had to set those dogs free because I didn't know <laughs> what the deadline was for when these dogs would go into that cinder block hut that was near the dog pound. I knew that's where they gassed them. It smelled really bad later on, it kind of was a sewer pump, but I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> so I enlisted my friend Hawkeye. He, he had tools and he didn't have a dad. I couldn't use my dad's tools because he would know they were missing. So Sunday after church, we took our hammer and screwdriver and headed out to the dog pound. By then, there were 13 dogs in the dog pound. And so I figured Sunday that the city workers wouldn't be there. We could, we could set these dogs free. So one by one, we let these dogs out, pry the, pry the door open or dismantle some boards off the back. Each time a dog got out, we were their best friend. They were just so happy. Their tails were wagging and everybody was excited and barking. And then we were on the last dog. It was a fat little mutt. And we had pried a board off and it just wasn't quite enough. And he was stuck. <laughs> then down the road, I could see the yellow city truck billowing dust. He's barreling down on us, but the dog stuck. <laughs> and so we said, we gotta go, we gotta go. So we took off on our stingray bikes across the salt flat, up over the highway, and then they, they couldn't see us anymore, and so we stopped to catch our breath, us and the 12 other dogs, and but then we, <laughs> here comes the fat little mutt. He, he made it, he made it. So there were 13 dogs, and me and, me and Hawkeye. But, okay, now what do we do? <laughs> so we started riding around town on our bicycles, and hoping the dogs would find their homes or get tired or something. Then I we finally found some kids playing football, and I spotted my brother. I said, like, oh no. And he said, hey David, what'd you do? Let the dogs out the dog pound? He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. But I have to admit, I was, I was pretty nervous because there was people who saw us, but we rode around town, and after a while, finally there were no more dogs, and we, we went our separate ways. And I just, in the pit of my stomach, I was afraid. I didn't know what was going to happen. But then the, the newspaper came out on Wednesday, the <laughs> weekly newspaper. Front page. <laughs> fifth graders vandalized dog <laughs> Two pages of pictures of our damage. But I knew we were safe. 
Because we were fourth graders. <laughs> talk to you in the bedroom. We had six kids, that was the only private place. It wasn't a good place to go. Mom and dad in the bedroom, not, not a good place to go. So my dad, he was the vice principal, he got straight to the point. He knew how to discipline. He said, did you let the dogs out of the dog pound? Yeah, I did. He said, why'd you do that? And I said, well, dad, they were gonna, they were gonna kill those dogs. I, I, I had to set them free. And he said, well, you know that what you did was wrong, was against the law, you know that, right? I said, yeah. And he said, did you have any accomplices? And I said, no, just me. I did it by myself. Later on, I found out he knew I had an accomplice, but he had a code of ethics, and he didn't make me snitch. <laughs> so, what he did do is he made me, he said, you have to go over to the chief of police and confess. Oh. The chief of police was this huge man, 6'5". I went, my knees were shaking. I felt like I was going to throw up. I rang the doorbell and he came and I looked up at him and he said, can I help you son? And I said, I let the dogs out of the dog pound. <laughs> and he said, you did, did you? He said, you're not going to do that again, are you? No. <laughs> I said, okay. So I left, I bawled my head off, but the next time you hear that song, you let the dogs out. <laughs> I don't know who it was. <laughs>